Welcome back. You're watching our special series, India at 75. Even as technology transforms India's broken healthcare system, some realities need to be addressed at the policy level. India spends just around a measly 2% of its GDP on healthcare, and that's significantly lower than the global average. And every year, over 100 million Indians slip into poverty due to out-of-pocket health expenditure. In fact, India is ranked 131 out of 189 countries on the UN Human Development Index. One of the big pain points is the lack of primary healthcare centers despite the country being largely rural. The shortfall of PHCs in some of the lesser developed states is as high as 75% and the proportion of primary health centers with doctors has only gone up marginally from 17.5% in 2005 to 21.8% in 2021. To solve some of these issues, the government is moving away from the traditional come-to-me healthcare model. Last year, India rolled out its ambitious healthcare program, Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission, which seeks to create an integrated digital health infrastructure that connects patients with doctors, hospitals and pharmacies digitally. As of July, nearly 23 crore Ayushman Bharat Health accounts have been created. However, Professor K. Srinath Reddy, President of the Public Health Foundation of India, member of the Task Force for COVID-19 and a former cardiologist, believes that without adequate investment in primary health care, digital technologies will only provide a chariot without wheels. Well, joining me now to take this conversation forward is Professor K. Srinath Reddy, President of the Public Health Foundation of India. Dr. Reddy, always a pleasure. Thanks very much for joining us. You know, just before the break, we were talking to Chris Gopalakrishnan about leveraging the power of technology to try and address India's global broken health care system and perhaps even come up with exportable models. But let's address the stark reality that we continue to be faced with, and that is the state of primary health care in the country. That is the fact that despite demands being made every year around the budget, healthcare spending continues to be largely out of pocket and that bears the, the individual bears the brunt of that. So if I were to ask you today, as we mark 75 years of our independence uh, and freedom, what do you think is the biggest imperative facing the government as well as the private sector when we talk of healthcare? We do need to strengthen uh, health service at all levels. But the foundational base of a well-functioning, efficient, equitable, and empathetic health system is primary health care, both rural and urban primary health care. We have notionally invested in rural primary health care right from independence, and to some extent it has delivered. However, it's been grossly under-resourced, and in several parts of the country, it has not had the infrastructure and human resources required to make it fully operational. Urban primary health care was largely neglected in the naive belief there will be enough number of doctors in urban areas to take care of medical problems, but we now recognize that we do require urban primary health care to be strengthened from point of view of health promotion, disease prevention, continuity of care, early detection of many conditions, including non-communicable diseases like high blood pressure and diabetes. And in order to prevent a deluge of people who can and should be treated in primary care from unnecessarily utilizing the resources of secondary and tertiary care, which is extremely expensive, both to the patient as well as to the system. So we do need to invest a lot more in primary health care, but that has to be comprehensive, provide continuity of care, provide both chronic and acute care as per need, but also be connected care, connected at each level of care and connected between the levels of care using digital technologies and referral systems as required. But we do require primary health care to be the fulcrum around which the health system will have to really revolve. Absolutely. And let me just take that point forward. Comprehensive and connected, that is the vision that you believe we need to pursue as far as uh, addressing primary health and primary health care is concerned. Two challenges there, one on the infrastructure side and second on the manpower side, especially in the context of trying to marry, uh, uh, you know, digital technologies to try and address both these. What have you in your experience seen so far? And more importantly, what can be built on to address the infrastructure challenge and the manpower challenge? Well, we do require investment in infrastructure. We know that there are many states in which 
health and wellness centers have really not been established and primary health care centers and community health centers too are really not functioning very well and certainly not capable in terms of their infrastructure and equipment. But while we do invest in infrastructure and the health infrastructure mission of the Aishman Bharat is going to be very helpful in that regard. And we must also invest in digital technologies, certainly to enable better connectivity and greater efficiency of delivery of services and outreach of services. We must recognize that our infrastructure will be a carriage without wheels and our digital technologies will be underperforming assets unless we have an adequate number of well-trained human resources who can utilize them well. And that means that our primary healthcare workforce has to be really doubled in terms of ASHAs and auxiliary nurse midwives, especially since the agenda of primary healthcare has now evolved from merely focusing on maternal and child health, infectious diseases, and some nutritional conditions to a much larger agenda, which includes non-communicable diseases of uh, mental health and many other conditions that require attention. Yeah. So unless our primary healthcare workforce is increase the numbers and skills will be falling short on our agenda delivery. Now, that of course needs to be also strengthened at secondary and tertiary care levels and their investment mm -hmm. in district hospitals becomes absolutely pivotal, both in terms of better service mm -hmm. delivery closer to home along with primary care, but also because district hospitals which are upgraded can become very effective training centers for new medical colleges, new nursing colleges, allied health professionals, and thereby redress the severe shortages that we have of our health workforce. So these are important investments that we must make, not just in tertiary care institutions like All India Institute of Medical Sciences or medical colleges, they are needed too. But unless we get our primary and secondary care well organized, we will have over dependence on tertiary care and that will crumble, as we have seen in COVID-19. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So you're saying a doubling of the uh, workforce is what is required when we talk about being able to adequately and appropriately address uh, primary health care in the country. But, you know, Dr. Reddy, let's, uh, let's also address the issue of financing. Uh, we talked about the underinvestment, and it's been a perennial issue, the underinvestment uh, by the government on health care. Uh, you know, the private sector uh, only able to fill a certain gap in the market. Uh, so from an insurance perspective, especially from a social health insurance perspective and a financing perspective, what do you believe is the need of the hour? We do require a greater amount of public financing, even to strengthen the public health system, not just the health care delivery system. And there, we just cannot focus only on capital expenditure. We do need to ensure that our ability to cover healthcare services, delivery of those services is going to be covered adequately as well. The operational expenses, making sure that there is equipment, there is, uh, there is no stock out of drugs, all of this is going to be absolutely important for service delivery. But I believe it's important that we do provide financial protection. We are doing it under the Pradhan Mantri Janaragi Yojana for about 40% of the population who are economically or socially disadvantaged. About 10% of the population is able to cover itself from employer provided or privately purchased insurance. The remaining 50% large sections of them are still very vulnerable and they can be really crippled uh, financially by catastrophic health expenditure. So we do need to extend the umbrella of financial protection, perhaps in stages, perhaps initially expanding the facility of the Pradhan Mantri Jana Arigya Yojana through income graded premiums to cover even mm. larger sections of that missing middle. And unless we do that, healthcare will become increasingly unaffordable. But at the same time, we need to build up public sector capacity to deliver healthcare and bring in the private sector as per need and opportunity through a well mm. uh, coordinated as well as monitored uh, program in which they can actually act as reliable partners with clearly defined deliverables and accountability mechanisms. 
India has a public sector which needs to be more responsive. It has a private sector which needs to be more responsible and a voluntary sector which needs to be more resourceful. Once we combine all three of these elements, then we ought to be able to build a health system on which we can rely. Well, I don't think that we could have comprehensively ended this conversation in a better way, a much more responsive public health care system, a much more responsible private health care system, and a much more resourceful social health care system. That is the need of the hour. Before I let you go, Dr. Reddy, what is the, the dream that you now have for India as we mark this very significant milestone? I believe that India must progress all across the country. We have several states which are lagging behind others, whether it is maternal mortality rates where there is a five-fold difference or infant mortality rates where there is a seven-fold difference. While we must celebrate our success overall as a country, we must bridge the gaps that exist between the various states because the weaker states will certainly pull down both in terms of economy as well as in terms of overall social development. So we ought to really ensure that the country as a whole must progress while bridging the existing inequities.